Okay, before just talking about this episode, let's take a moment to like realize how effective and how much of a good character that Katsumatsu is. Because before before I had ever watched like Kaijo vs. Seiden the first time, I already thought Katsumatsu was just this angry guy, but this guy is actually skilled. I mean, he conquered he conquered Kuriko's phantom shot. He's always encouraging his teammates and actually fighting them with bashing them in the head with logic. And at the end of the day, he's basically smarter than everybody on the field. Smarter than his entire team on the field. And I just got to say that. He actually one-ups Kisei in both knowledge and in skill. Now, okay, yeah, Kisei has perfect copy, but, you know, that's up for debate. I'm just going to leave it right there. But in this episode, we come in with another continuation of Kaijo versus Serin. And they are going at it. Kisei, is, his leg is hurting. So what the coach does is that he subs him in. And he subbed him in for some other player. I forgot what his name was. But um, once it's just Seti and Kaijo, they're going at it. And actually, in my opinion, it looks like ha Kaijo was actually playing way better than they did when Kisei was in. Because Kisei, they mostly were, that was their trump card. Because he was using perfect copy copy and all of that stuff. So it was really not. It was, it was actually really nice to see that they can manage. It's glad to see that it's not one of those teams that go like, oh crap, we don't have our ace, we're going to suck, which is what Sidian was basically like in the first, I think, when they first challenged out Almine and they got their butts kicked. So, just saying, that, that that's that's the kind of team that I don't want Kaijo to be, and that's Kaijo was actually something better than that. And once they're coming in, um, Sidian doesn't budge, they just start to, they just start to try racking up points and closing the gap. But then, right before Kuroko gets subbed out, apparently what Kasumatsu does is completely like shatters his phantom shot because um, Kasumatsu is going like, "Wait a minute! I, I I know I know how it disappears. I know what happens." And what happens was, um, it's not the tra trajectory of how Kuroko does his phantom shot. He actually puts it to his chest and he shoots it at a different perspective to where the person up close can't see. And the phantom, that's how the phantom shot disappears. But Katsumatsu, he jumped back and he was able to block it. So then that was a really big letdown for Kuriko. Just like when Almina blocked Kuriko's Ignite Pass. But then Kagami says, you know what, listen, I'm, leave it to me. And Kagami, the entire time he was getting double teamed by Kaijo. But then what he did was he actually used the double team as a, as a way to drive through and start making points. And once he started finding a loophole through getting double teams, he started racking up points. And at the end of the second quarter, Sedin and Kaijo were both tied. And basically what Rika said was, honestly, there's nothing wrong that they're doing. Sedin, nothing wrong with what Sedin's doing. What they just have to do is offense, being on the offensive is their only choice. And they have to try and get as far ahead in points more than Kaijo. And then it actually seems logical because if you think about it, when Kisei comes back in, he still has two minutes left of perfect copy, which means he's not going to be, which means Sadie's going to really need a bunch of points so they can miss mistakes, but they shouldn't be missing mistakes because that can cost them. And coming back into the, and then once Kaijo is like in halftime, Katsumatsu is going like, listen, Kisei, you cannot go back in. We all know your story about your leg. I know that you want to overwork things. But at the end of the day, none of that matched. I know that you want to play this game, but just because you are out does not mean that this, the, like the outcome of this game is going to be any different. So Katsumatsu was really speaking some logic into Kisei, and I actually like that because I'm actually glad that some, like, I'm, I'm all right with the character being determined, but when they overwork themselves and not know, and not know that they're hurting themselves in the process... It sort of just makes me think that they're blindsided to what can actually happen. And Katsumatsu, he just trumped all that. He's saying, listen, this is going to happen if you overwork yourself with your leg. So you need to, like, stay out. And it's not a lot. And then it's not a logical. And then once Setting and Kaiju come back in, it's the second half of the game. And they just start going at it. And they're, they're um, Setting's using team play now. And they're, like, they're getting really cornered because Kaijo is double teaming them and screening them and all that stuff and they really don't know what to do. So no players can no players were being left unguarded. Kaijo was on the defensive and I guess you could say on the offensive too. And they started making blocks, they started making rebounds, and they started to come up until the end. And then at the ending, at the ending of that episode, you saw you saw Kasamatsu. He had like a bunch of determination. The the um the title of this episode was called 
don't belittle us. And then once I think the Bill Cosby guy made that shot, um, Kasamatsu says like this epic, like he says it with this epic quote. He goes like, "We are Kaijo High School. Don't un don't belittle us," which basically means don't underestimate us. And then you could see like his face go in like some sort of manga form, and that just looked epic. Like that was epic as crap. That was wow. And then I think in TV promos, I think tell, correct me if I'm wrong for all you manga readers. Does Kisei copy Kuroko's Ignite Pass? Because if he does, that looks epic. Like, that looks badass. But tell me, guys, what were your thoughts on this episode of Kuroko no Basket? That is it for me today. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. Be sure to comment, hit that like button like it stole something, and be sure to subscribe to my channel if you're new, and be sure to like the video if you liked it. And until we meet again, see ya.